Hi everybody, welcome to Sandy B. Stitches, episode five. Today on my channel, we're gonna talk about crochet, knitting, and some cross stitch. Maybe a little bit of gardening as well. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Valerie, and if you've been with me before, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching with me and coming along with my crafting journey. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you can get notified when I have a new video. So lately, we've still been doing a lot of gardening. We've had some rainy days, so that's been helpful for the grass and the gardens to start growing. And I finally got some things planted. So uh, yesterday, actually, I got to go to a local garden sale and my dad and I were able to find some new strawberries to plant and I will insert some of the footage here of what I've planted so far. I got some pretty flowers and I was able to start planting some veggies. I planted some peas and then I have some tomatoes that I've been growing under my grow light. This is my setup for my seed starting in my indoor garden. I have a watering can my dad got for me that works really well. I have my heat mat, my light, and then several different types of tomatoes that are growing really well, uh, jalapeno, and then I also have these little containers where I'm starting some seeds, and they're like little mini greenhouses where I've got some seeds starting there too. This is some stuff that I have to plant outside. I got some trailing petunias yesterday and then um, this really pretty lantana I had growing well last year. It just didn't make it in the spot it was in so I want to replant that in a different spot and then I have a lily too I'm going to attempt to grow outside that I had for Easter. And then outside I have these raised garden beds which I've got these new bags I need to get set up to heat the soil and keep my tomato plants growing well. And I planted some peas here yesterday. Here are my strawberry plants that I got at the sale. And I have a blueberry bush that w grew last year. And I got a few blueberries before the birds got them. And then I have another raised garden bed and my thyme is still growing like crazy from last year and then I also have a clematis growing really well and then over here I still have some pots and things to redo I have some strawberries from the last few years that are growing over here so I'm going to see if my new spot grows better or if these are still going to do well and that is my little mini garden tour. So I do have some things I've finished over the last couple of weeks. The first one is right back here. It's a crochet project. And it is the birthday table runner I talked about on my last episode. And I think it turned out really cute. I did some granny squares in that variegated kind of pinks and, and blues. And then I did the aqua single crochet trim. And then I found this video online on YouTube actually that had these little pom-pom trim. And so I tried that and then I went ahead and blocked it so it was a little bit flatter. And I'll show you a picture of it on my table. But I think it turned out really cute and I can use it for spring and for any kind of birthdays. So that's what I finished for crochet. And I kind of like it draped back here too. <laughs> Another thing for crochet that I did right around Easter was a little chick with my Knit Picks Amigurumi yarn. And I got the safety eyes um, when I bought the ones for my Pikachu, for my son, on Amazon. It's got a little tuft of hair and these cute little wings and a little beak, it's teeny tiny. But this pattern is called Spring Chick by Lauren Epsi, I believe, Espy. I'll link it down below. And it was really easy, a little bit easier, I think, than the Pikachu. So I got this little guy done and he's cute for, kind of looks like a bluebird to me, not a chick, but 
I think those would be fun to make in a little bit of uh, different colors. I did have one other springtime craft. I did it several years ago with my kids when they were younger. And it's a really cute painting project with their feet. And I just painted the bottom of their foot uh, orange and then green for their toe area and then printed it on this little canvas from Hobby Lobby. You can get them in big packs. And I have one of each of their feet and I think it turned out really cute. And I put these up every spring for Easter and then I just kind of leave them up for spring decor. So that's something that's fun and easy you could do with your kids or your grandkids. Um, or if you babysit, it could be a fun little project to surprise the parents with. My last finished object since we met last is I finished my tulip wreath, or for, it was supposed to be for the month of March from Stitching with the Housewives. And I made a few little changes. First of all, the pattern calls for these, I believe it's these top two tulips to be white. And I decided I wanted more pink, so I changed those to pink. There also were some little single squares scattered around in these sections of just white, like little dots of white. And I don't like stitching just single X's floating out in the designs, so I left those out. I think it looks a little bit cleaner for me. And um, the other change, I don't know if you have noticed, but these are little clovers around here and they're supposed to all be little three leaf clovers and I decided to make one a lucky four leaf clover. So I just changed, instead of doing a stem, I added another little leaf and I love how it turned out. So now I just need to glue it down to sticky board and I can swap it out with my bunnies. And I actually have the it's not May, it's June, the strawberries one complete too, so I'll be able to change that out. I showed these last time, but I have the strawberry one ready to go for the summer. And then I also have the patriotic July one ready. And then I did find a couple others that I had started and forgotten about. Um, so we'll go through those here in a second. Oh, but for those who are wondering, on the tulip, it calls for classic Colorworks colors, but I just grabbed some colors I had from my DMC stash. So if you want to do the similar colors, I used 988 for the green. The orange, which is not very much of it, just in the little yellow tulips down here, 921. 3326 for the light pink, 602 for the hot pink, and really if I could do this again, I think I would just make all of these pink. I know there's white in the letters to go, the white is to go with the letters is what I'm trying to say, but I think the pink would just be more my thing because there's already some white in the clovers. And then the last one, yellow, 728. So those are the colors I used. I think it turned out well. I was going to say on my crochet table runner, I used this hook. It is a five millimeter uh, letter H and it's the Clover Amour hook. And I really like these. I have just a couple of these and I've been kind of testing out the different brands that I have and just seeing what I like. But for this project, that one worked really well. I guess we're ready to move on to whips, things I'm still working on. Since we just talked about the tulip wreath and some cross stitch, we'll do a little bit of a uh, floss tube segment here. But my other cross stitch project I've been working on is Spring Tulips, also by Stitching with the Housewives. And I've gotten quite a bit done. Um, I started working on the beehive yesterday. I don't. I didn't want to start and just fill this whole watering can in. I love to see the color and kind of, I like to get things going and map out so I it's easier to count to the next element. Um, but this was originally done on black and I am doing it on a 14 count Ada in an aqua from, I believe I bought it from Fat Quarter Shop. 
And then again, for the floss colors, I am using my DMC stash, mostly because my classic color works are all tied up in whips, which I need to uh, go through all of those. And then I had my other colors that were similar for my tulip wreath, but for this one, I am using a green that I don't even have the number for. So luckily I have quite a bit for this project. I have 30, 45 for the pull, I guess, of the beehive and a little bit of the detail on the beehive. The watering can is 3895. The yellow is 725. I just have a plain white. I don't even have marked. I have 3833 three, three for the light pink and 3805 for the dark pink. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to finish this on yet. If I'm going to finish it flat or into a little pillow or something like that. But I like how I have my tulip bunches finished behind me and then my wreath. And then I like things in odd numbers in my decor. So I wanted a third tulip cross stitch design to put in my decor in my living room. So that is that one. And then as far as the wreaths go, I do have two others that I had started and I dug them out. I'm actually pretty far on the September one. So I just have mostly up here, it's just leaves. So I have the bulk of the design done. And again, I kind of skip around a little bit. I don't like to fully finish, you know, the whole uh, scarecrow before I move on. I get too excited and want to see what the other parts are going to look like. And especially on these, since they're big circles with space in the center, I need to kind of keep going along so I can easily get some stuff done and easily count, if that makes sense. I hope I'm explaining that right. So I kind of go around and do what I can with the color nearest the next element. And then I pick up a new color so I can get some more, see some more progress, I guess, quicker. And then I also had started the Christmas or December one. So I'm doing pretty good. I actually have some family members that are going to be stitching and um, working on the August pattern which I believe is sunflowers. And then the, what was it? The November one, which is I think like pilgrims and kind of Thanksgiving elements. So I have those two to work on next. I really want to make the May wreath, it's daisies. I think that would be cute, but I'm not really pressured to do it since I have the tulips and I love them so much. I can kind of just have them up until I'm ready to put my strawberries out. So maybe that'll be this year, maybe that'll be for next spring to get some more stitching in that way. But Stitching with the Housewives actually has several different patterns with daisies right now that are really cute. So if you're wanting to do some spring stitching, that might be a good place to coordinate. They have lots of little designs and elements that don't take very long to work on and that way, instead of just one big piece, you could have little pieces of decor kind of mixed through your home and it kind of ties everything together. So I think that's why their stuff's so popular because it's kind of like an instant gratification. You can get one of those little projects done quicker, especially if you don't use really tiny fabric <laughs> and you use something easier. I have really enjoyed working on this one compared to the black even weave. So this one's been really exciting to get to and I made myself finish the wreath before I worked on this one more. Okay, so that is it. Um, I have not made any more progress on my donation hat as far as knitting goes. I was really um, preoccupied with the birthday table runner. I do want to work on the knitted birthday banner. That's my next plan besides my Eva cardigan. But my Eva cardigan is my main knitting project right now. So I want to show you how I've been doing on that. It's actually getting really full in here. Not a lot of space anymore. I 
finally finished the body um, of the just plain stockinette. Now I am onto the ribbing. Let me see if I can get this facing the right way. So I've got all of this stockinette done. And then I'm holding it upside down, but I wanted to show you the, the ribbing is a two by two rib along the bottom. I've got about an inch of it done and it calls for three and a half inches. So I don't think that's gonna take too much longer. I just need to, I've been so preoccupied with my cross stitch that I haven't gotten as much done on the sweater. Plus I kind of slowed down on this since it's gotten warmer outside. And I know I probably won't be wearing it much um, anytime soon, but I really love the ribbing at the bottom. So the pattern calls for a needle size six, and then I met Gage with a needle size four for the body. And so it called for actually a four for the ribbing. So I just went down to a two for the ribbing. I think I like how it's turning out. I don't want it to come in, you know, really tight or anything like that at the base. Um, so I'm going to use the same needle size. There's some ribbing on the sleeves at the cuff too. So um, that's my plan for that. So once I finish the couple other inches of the bottom, that'll be done. And then I'll be able to work on the sleeves next. So hopefully I'll be able to get some progress with that before we meet next time. I am on my third ball of yarn. I bought six. So I'm thinking hopefully I can get most of the ribbing on the base done before I need to break into my fourth ball of yarn. And then I have four for one sleeve, five for the other sleeve, and six hopefully to do the uh, button band or I don't know what you call it. it. And then it goes all the way up and does a neckline of ribbing around too. So I'm hoping I have enough yarn and I won't have to order more and wait for that. So that's my main knitting project. Like I said, I do wanna work on the birthday banner next. I only have a couple weeks until my kids' birthdays. So I really wanna get it done if I can, um, but I also have been working on some other stuff and just things happen. So we'll see how it goes. I at least got the birthday table runner done. So that's some progress for this year that I'm really excited about. We're cruising right along. Okay, so for haul, I have a fun um, basket of haul that's overflowing back behind me. But my mom and I were shopping the other day and we ran into Hobby Lobby for something totally unrelated to knitting or crochet. And um, we just kind of took a quick look through the yarn aisle and I showed her these really cute ones. I don't know if they're new or if I just had overlooked them because they're on a higher shelf, but they have these cute little 99 cent acrylic yarns that would be perfect for amigurumi. So I could not resist, um, especially after I made the little bluebird. That yarn is the Knit Picks Amigurumi sets that I had gotten a few weeks back. But you know, you always need some different colors and these are so fun. And it was a rainy, dreary day. We needed some color in our life. So this really pretty purple, dark gray, navy, light gray. There's 20 different colors. I think I got almost all of them. Look how beautiful this bright blue is for summer. So I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet, but now I've got a bunch of different colors to use. I actually, I do know something I'm gonna do with them, but I know my mom's watching. <laughs> She already kind of knows. I do want to work on some ideas I had for Mother's Day gifts. And I had seen some cute little daisy or different flower, crocheted flower bookmarks. So I thought that would be really cute to gift with maybe a book or a gift card to get a new book because everybody loves a good book. And then I also saw... Um, some pattern, I don't remember where it's from, but it was a cute little potted, kind of ambigurumi, I guess, but it's not an animal, it's a tulip in a little pot. 
and it's all crocheted and then stuffed so it sets up. I thought that would be a cute little gift. Here's some bright red and black and a lighter aqua. This one's dark, more of a teal, I guess. Cause it says teal on it. <laughs> this one is aqua and this one's a burgundy. Or as a lot of people around here say, crimson. So those are all of my haul from the last couple of weeks as far as crafting goes. As far as reading and watching have gone, I blazed through the Sophie Kinsella book I talked about last time, Love Your Life, and I finished that. And then I actually started and finished a new book by Christina Lauren. I don't think it's a new book, but new to me, called Soulmate Equation. That one was really good. And now I am reading another Sophie Kinsella called The Party Crasher. It's pretty funny so far. She's sneaking into a party at her childhood home. So that's what I've been reading. We did end up watching Wish. None of us really loved it. It was kind of bizarre in our minds for a Disney film. Um, but we watched that. I'm trying to think anything else we've watched. Mostly just that and Amazing Race. My husband and I are almost done watching the Australian season one of Traders. We've been watching all of the different seasons of those. So we're, I think we're on the last episode or two, but that's all we've been reading and watching. So that's all I have for today. I, my plans for today and this weekend include getting some more gardening in, maybe going to another store or two to look at some more plants because you can never have too many, right? And then I'm hoping to get the bottom part of my cardigan done and starting on the birthday banner for my kids. And I hope that we get a lot of outside time too. So I don't know if I'm gonna get a ton of stuff done in the next couple of weeks since birthdays are coming up, but hopefully I'll have some fun stuff to share with you guys next time. I hope you get some crafting time in this weekend, wherever you are, and I will see you all real soon.